Maestro de Station Painting for Star Landing, the founder of Hawaii Stack and the studio. Uh, I think we'll start uh, because you know, we have a few more uh, expected attendees soon. So, but again, we'll start with the second of the time and start. We would like to hear from you about you and your story and your uh, you know, entrepreneurs, and, and maybe let's, let's start. Okay. Malayalayal and Lairim. Lairim. We will use a mix of Malayalam and English. Good evening. Uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, present quickly in two or three components what my life story is so that I'll have enough, uh, I've created enough dots for you to ask questions and then from there I'll pick it. Uh, because otherwise the, the context which I want to introduce is a complex concept so it might take a while for people to ask questions. So I'll, I'll talk about my early life and then probably my exploration journey and my current entrepreneurial pursuit. So this is the, uh, probably I, I can take questions after each component. So I'll try to do 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes each. We're starting at 5.10. So every 10 minutes, I'll, I'll try to move to the next component. Okay. The first component is my uh, early life. Uh, but by chance, uh, uh, this happened to be the place where I was born uh, and my house is pretty close by. I did my engineering in model engineering college and then did my MBA from XLRI Jamshedpur. I had a global exposure at an early age. I worked in about approximately 18 cities globally uh, before deciding to come back to Cochin hometown with love of the town to actually do business here. I'm a first generation entrepreneur. Nobody anywhere in the family is actually an entrepreneurial business running person. So I had all the challenges of starting out in the early stage. I studied electronics engineering. Then I did my MBA in finance, worked in technology. Uh, I was a contrarian in character right from the beginning. So I was very particular that I'll start a business only in a domain that I have no idea about. So I chose real estate as the first domain when I came back. I chose uh, suburban towns that are growing over the next 10 to 20 years as the first bet that I can make. So I went in search of a new town that's possible in South India over the next 10 years found a place in southern Tamil Nadu which was tutored to be the next big city uh, in South India. Went after the story for, for a few years, did not work out, venture failed, faced cheating. I was literally struggling, faced the first failure, faced the first experience of problems in human relations and had to wrap up the venture. Chose another city went to Coimbatore, did the same thing, failed again, came back to Kuchin, tried real estate again, succeeded a little bit. Once, had, once I got a feeling that is about to succeed, decided to move into a different industry, consciously chose construction as the next industry. So this was the fifth industry uh, that was consciously, exposure was being built. And I think over the next few years, understood that this is an industry with deep problems, structurally very, very, very difficult to crack because it's very unorganized. Problems are too rampant. Not at all formally trained people, very difficult to build systems. So like the challenge, went after it for a few years, built a company. When I almost realized that the company is about to work, I stepped out, thought that, okay, so got the fifth industry exposure. Now let me just not build a business for some time. And I actually went into my exploration journey for the next seven years. And uh, the current me that I am is the person that I'm trying to do a venture after five years of my entrepreneurial life and probably about seven years of exploration after that. 
and then trying to attempt to venture with all these learnings uh, for the next decade. Th that's the way in which I've conceptualized my journey. So it was a first phase of lots of failures of multiple different types, multiple industries exposure, unorganized, organized, formal, informal, modern, city, village, rural, trained, untrained, developed markets, undeveloped markets, small city, tier 2, tier 3, tier 1, global. The mix of that entrepreneurial exposure is what I could get in the first few years of my career. And then I decided that something is working, something is not working. So something else I should do so that I can actually improve from there. Any questions? Anything anybody want to ask? That city's name is called Nanganeri. Uh, it's a place in. Uh, at that point in time, the government had announced the largest SC seat in the country uh, to come up in that place. It is in a place called Walliur uh, in southern Tamil Nadu. Uh, it started off, it uh, achieved a little bit of traction, and then for whatever reasons, the city or the ecosystem did not pick up. When I started analyzing the reasons for failure, it was categorized into one, my structural knowledge, second, the markets that I operate in, third, the people that I operate with, fourth, the stage of evolution of the industry, fifth, probably the direction in which the industry is moving. So these were all different dimensions and these were playing in multiple different ways in like a coherent system to break you. So the reason for failing in the second venture was not, it's not really second venture, it's just a second city. It was not structural or market, it was largely issues with people, my inability to build a good team, my inability to find the right set of aligned people to work with. So it, it was a different reason that was identified and it was not a market force that failed. So then I decided that uh, I'm not good, as good as what I thought I was. So there's something wrong with me that, you know, this is not really working the speed and pace at which I thought it would have worked because I prepared well enough in my life to become an entrepreneur. I think it was a childhood dream. So I just did not understand why I could fail. Why, I, why did I fail? I was reasonably intelligent from childhood, aced exams, got good marks, studied in good institutions. So structurally, I was unable to comprehend the reasons of my failure. So then I started an approach where I thought for a, for a period of time, I will appear as ignorant in front of the crowd that I interact with. I will not talk about anything that I know. So that let others tell what they know. And then once I figure that out, probably that will give me a route to work better. So the conscious reason was I was very good with numbers from childhood. So I decided at a point that I will not talk numbers. When anybody talks numbers, I'll say, I don't know. You know, you probably you know, explain in a different way. So then I started getting variables which are very different from what I was used to. So it, it took me to a world which where I was a, I was a baby from start, where I didn't know anything about dimensions which, which I had not explored at all in my life. It was largely around build, there's an art of breadth building. It, it, it is the art of exploring sciences, uh, cognitively, emotionally, psychologically, different dimensions that you have not explored in your life earlier. So if, if you were a marketing person, then you actually go and do something completely different from that. So you, you got to really become a beginner's mind. You have to actually start from that scratch. So I started exploring sciences one after the other. So went into, largely it started with people, then went into emotional intelligence, philosophy, spirituality, sociology, uh, went into depths of new domains to understand what is it that I'm lacking as an individual. So the more I went into it, I understood that uh, my ability to comprehend is very, very limited. 
and whatever competence that I had presumed was around one percentage of the things that really matter. So it was very humbling and I decided that now there is no point in attempting anything till I get at least a grasp of what all these sciences are. It may not look very entrepreneurial, but I thought that that's a better route to do. So over the next five to six years, at least I would have explored some 20 sciences in depth to understand what those sciences mean and what is the relevance of those sciences in our daily life. So when I had actually decided to take such an approach, uh, then I understood that it's a learning journey, it's a learning evolution journey. And uh, maybe I should share it with some people. So I started looking for youngsters who are ready to be mentored. And uh, one person voluntarily agreed in 2017. Uh, he became my mentee. And then uh, I think I gave him a challenge that if you do a business worth of a particular size, then I'll mentor you. So he was also an explorer variety. So he did that in about 18 months. It was reasonably good for the our market standards. Then both of us realized that this is okay. It's easy to build this thing. So let's just wind it down. You know, there's no point in building this. So we wound up that business. And then we thought, let's build a community of learners. Let's build a community of explorers who we can actually build a business sometime in the future. So over the next five years, we built a community of youngsters, all, asp <coughs> all aspiring entrepreneurs from different parts of the state uh, who were very keen to get into the entrepreneurial arena. And then different types of experience, some, some went deep, some did not go deep. During the process of building that community, a uh, lot of learnings came out, largely learnings around how the psychology of a youngster works and how does a person think uh, when you're young and how does it evolve, the developmental psychology of a youngster when they actually move from 20s to 30s and then from there what happens. So the community journey enabled us to go very, very deep into a dimension called cognitive psychology. So largely I became a psychologist for a period of time to understand how the psychology of human mind works in, in, a, in a very, very in-depth capacity. And uh, that enabled us to build a reasonably good community of deep learners who are very actively interested in attempting highly aspirational ambitious games over the period of next one or two decades. So the focus was on assembling that team and then building something with them at a later point in time. So the focus is very clearly told that we are not attempting value creation. We will attempt value creation at a later point in time. For now, we are just learning and understanding how to collaborate, how to work well with people, how human minds work. And then we will bring on the market context at a later point in time. So this was the a, a brief period of exploration. Does that give any clarity? So people have understood very, very concrete language uh, in terms of systems and numbers and uh, business language. People who understood both will understand that to talk at abstract is very, very difficult compared to talking at specifics. And so when you hear someone talking at an abstract level, people will understand that that is because you understand concrete and not because you don't understand concrete. It is because you've understood the limitations of concrete. So like this, people will talk somebody or the other will get attracted and they'll come. It was not marketed, it was not uh, spoken about. I've not written about it anywhere. It was completely organic. Um, a large part of the connecting point was me as a person. A large point was it. Uh, I can't really say the community worked because of that, uh, but the connecting point was me. And uh, over a period of six years, I did uh, 12,000 hours of face-to-face -face coaching. So the the face-to-face -face coaching that you do with that person opens up the person, makes them share their mental model uh, to the depths in which they have never thought, thought about. So they start talking, you know, what is it that is my problem? Uh, and then when you do it with 5, 10, 20 people, you understand common patterns and then you go deeper. That makes them open up more. So it, it was that coaching model that worked. In, in the context of organization building, you need to understand 
people through the lenses of three different sciences. Each is completely different. One is the science of leadership, the second is the science of management, and the third is the science of system design. Each is completely different. Each has a role. So when you build a team, the leadership qualities will matter. Once they come, your ability to make them work in a proper design will matter. And once they are put into that role with the design, the ability to drive execution and goals through them will matter. So one of them would not work by itself. So if you can do a combination of these three sciences, it will work. Without that, it will not work uh, in an organizational execution context. You can align people uh, through leadership. There's no need for all of this. You can put people into a system which you've designed. They will not perform. If you've aligned a person and they've made them understood their design, and then if you know the art of execution, then you can drive goals through them. So it depends on this, this combination of these three that you, that, that's my experience. If I have a yes, please. He's a renowned uh, people consultant and consultant for some 20, 25 years. My senior is a good friend, his name is Sri Ram. Go ahead. Very fundamental question. Why do you spend five, six years exploring on your exploration journey? So, I'm sorry, I missed five minutes of what you were saying. Uh, I had to step up. But, and you said you created a team of like minded people. And you took us through the process. Very basic question how did you economically sustain this group of people? And I'm sure that they were not. Sure, there is a love passion for everything, but I am sure there is some underlying economics. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, so what was it that you were doing, which, especially because you said this came at the back of two, two failed ventures. So, what was that economic engine which was supporting this entire process? Uh, <coughs> I've been a system thinker and system designer uh, quite uh, from quite an early, uh, at least. From the time I graduated, I've been a system thinker. So the, when I think about a business, I think system. Uh, that was a limitation too when I started. I thought system is what a business is. So building interconnected systems and making each system economically functioning and making each component profitable in itself is the art that was cracked about a decade back. Uh, so every component, when I say a component, it's an economically feasible systemic component that works in itself, which is being built for connection to something else at a later point in time. So, so these, there was some economic self-sustaining model for each of these components. Whatever you call them as components. Uh, not some. They were all entrepreneurial projects pursuits and all these people were making money while they were learning. It's just that they did not try to maximize money. They did not try to build a company. They did not try to create value because it was very clearly told that you should not try that. Just live, just survive, don't do anything beyond. So economics was the base of everything uh, and the system designs was largely anchored around those bits. In, in fact, good that you said the question, the, the evolution to the venture studio is anchored around this specific point that I said, that a business can be componentized like this. And each can be a different system. It can be built by different people at different points in time. And they can be collected and combined. And leverage is created. That is what the concept of Venture Studio is as well. And anything else? Any other question? Please feel free to ask. It's fine. Yeah, I get into the Venture Studio bit. It's 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes. Anything? Am I talking sense or is it, uh, is it sensible? Is the tone okay? Okay. So uh, we get into the third component. Third component is where uh, I am now uh, as an individual. My community is our ventures, our venture studios. Uh, the first part was about my personal evolution and then the exploration journey. And now we'll talk about what we figured out and what we're trying to play uh, for the future and what these youngsters are all trying to play along with us. There are three different startup ecosystems, startup formats, early stage formats across the world. One of them is technically called an ecosystem itself. 
where it is not a functional participant in the art of value creation. It just provides, facilitates largely a space, network, connections, mentoring. So that's called an ecosystem. So probably Thai is an ecosystem, uh, KSUM is an ecosystem. So ecosystems do play a role, especially city oriented across the world. Uh, city based communities are an active value creating mechanism and uh, some of the cities in the world have cracked that code, which is why uh, some cities excel over the other because they've excelled in the art of creating a community that is anchored around a city and a vibe created over a 20 year period. That's how a city becomes an ecosystem. Then there's a second format called incubator, which I think everybody would have heard, which is an early stage facilitator that gives you some something or the other to you know, start your journey. There is a third format called accelerator, which is a format where you, you take your venture from zero to one or a point A to point B by your own effort, at which stage you approach an accelerator and from there that Accelerate takes you from point B to point C. So for that, it's a time bound game. They will take an equity or a cost or a fee for that period. And so that's the third format. There's a fourth format called Venture Studio, which is an operator partner. It does the business along with you. It provides you some capabilities and does some activity which creates a valuable outcome in your startup. This is the least common format across the world. Statistically, the most profitable format, most difficult to execute, but the least common. So that format is called Venture Studio and YSTAG is a Venture Studio. It's the fourth type of format available in startup ecosystems. Is that clear? So a Venture Studio uh, to simple, uh, in a very simplistic manner, helps you in venture building. When you say venture, any economic activity organized and assembled as a system, which is systemic, systemically executable over a long period of time, continuously creating value for the purpose for which it was created to solve a particular problem. That is what a venture is. So anything that, that is matching this format can be built structurally component by component. So Venture Studios excel in that art. Does, that, does it make sense? So Venture Studios have good or bad, they see each venture as a collection of components. They connect those components as a system and make that system work. So some venture studios excel through one particular factor, some other venture studios excel through a different factor. The reasons can be different, the approach can be different, the ways in which they do can be different. It's all driven by the founding team's secret sauce to venture building. But all of them essentially does this art in a playbook format. They create multiple startups component by component. Is that clear? Please ask me something, otherwise I, I get a feeling that Accelerator is a hands-off partner, which is typically time-bound. It's usually a three to six to nine month engagement, where they provide you a certain set of capabilities, which will enable you to move from point A to point B, if you know how to leverage it properly. So why don't you just give us a, a, mm -hmm. a sense of what those kind of capabilities are that they bring to the table? Maybe that will help? Say for example, uh, I see you as a person who, who does people consulting, people related consulting. So uh, as a startup, I might not have any idea about the relevance of these things when I start off. So if I go to an institution, if I've got Sriram for a particular capability and there are 10 other mentors who've got similar capabilities, I get that consulting at that time and I get guidance in terms of executing a particular piece for a period of time. Yes, it does add a type of value to the, to the quality in which I build the venture. But after that period is over, you are gone, I am gone. You know, we have no connections after that. So this is a time bound point A to point B engagement. Typically, Venture Studios operate at early stage. Typically, most of them are early stage Venture Studios. So Venture Studio takes it from a zero step, zero stage to a stage at which a venture can stand on its own. 
Sometimes it's two years, sometimes it's three years, sometimes it's four years. But once the organization has got an ind individual management running that organization, the relevance of a venture studio comes down dramatically. So it depends upon the speed at which the venture goes. It can actually become independent in one year, it can become independent in two or three or four years. It depends upon the size and speed at which the leading entrepreneur drives the game. There are lots of uh, commercial engagement models uh, in which venture studios engage. Uh, venture studios typically engage anywhere from 5 to 70 percentage in terms of the ownership in a company. That's the usual range that is there. 70 percentage is the extreme where venture studios actually complete the 0 to 1 game and then look for a founder to join. Because the, the game is actually designed and built by an institution, then they invite entrepreneurs to say, can you become the CEO of this? So the spectrum from 5 to 70 is what you hear usually. Since I've been a part of community, I would have loved to say yes, but no, venture studio is a commercial relationship. Venture studio attempts to create value in the fastest possible way. So whichever entrepreneur, whichever game, whichever startup enables a venture studio to uh, move from point A to point B in terms of the valuation that it can create for itself, that is what a venture studio would bet on. But it brings in multiple capabilities. It brings in a spectrum of capabilities. Uh, we call it stacks in our terminology. There is a tech stack, there is a product stack, there is a marketing stack, there is a capital stack, there is a design stack. You use series of capabilities that you bring in. Depending upon the founder, you plug with the right capability. Uh, as far as I know, it is unlikely to be the same thing. Uh, because uh, Venture Studio is a very nascent concept in our country. Uh, there are only 10 or 20 players who are attempting a serious Venture Studio in the country. Uh, yet to see a scaled up Venture Studio in the country. So that, that's unlikely to be the case. Globally, that's not the situation. Venture Studios ex engage without an exit plan. I don't think a venture studio will be able to engage with a very clearly defined exit plan because till the till till a particular venture is made valuable, there's no way in which a venture studio can exit. That's not the model in which venture studios are designed, unlike a pure investor investing into a venture. It will create value or the venture will fade away. Uh, two lenses to look at it. One uh, I think I need to build some vocabulary before answering that question. The venture studios typically work well for two types of uh, individuals. One is when the individual is ready to attempt without the complications of a mental model that the person has built over the years. So a typical youngster who has not spent more than 3-4 years in corporate life is very good because the person is very moldable new mental models can be created and the practically you can create a new mental model for that entrepreneur that, that that's one good stage at which you can work uh, but it takes time for that person to evolve and become that the other stage is when a person has actually significantly spent time in a particular industry or a domain and have understood what am i good at what am i not good at so at which stage a person will realize that this is this is a problem that I can understand. These are areas which I am good at, which automatically means that I know the areas which I am not good at. So at that stage, a person becomes very easy to collaborate with. So either a person who does not know anything or a person who knows practically everything about that domain. In between is very, very difficult for a venture studio to collaborate, which takes us to the second question, second part of the question that you asked. So a, a person who has already started a startup does not really fit into the domain of partnering with Venture Studio. Either you come in before you start or for your next venture which is you know after 2-3 years. But once you have started, typically a Venture Studio is not a good bet. Does that answer? Then you have taken a uh, branch mesh guy and turned him into an entrepreneur and same way with somebody who's experienced who have come to you for specific requirements. Yeah, um, maybe I'm, I'm not uh, in a position to share the exact details, but I, I can explain the persona. 
probably another vocabulary that might help is uh, the the common media calls the founder entrepreneur venture builder operator all as one variety businessman uh, first we got to understand what is that what are those differences what are those people so you got to understand who you are first before deciding who to partner with so the easiest thing is to understand who a founder is a founder is typically a a mad person like me who is after an idea after a problem for years without really bothered about the exact specifics of when it will be executed a founder is the founder is likely to be this mad about a problem so i am mad about the problem that entrepreneurs face in early stage there has to be a better way to solve it that's the problem that i am after an entrepreneur is typically a person who knows how to achieve a particular goal in the fastest possible time so they may not be particularly passionate about the problem but once i buy in whatever it takes i'll go and solve it so it's a completely different mentality in fact founder and entrepreneur in most cases are exclusive qualities it's mutually exclusive it's very difficult to get a combo a founder entrepreneur because that guy will be phenomenally competent you know you can actually go after a particular problem with passion while being goal driven and executed and do it for continuous long periods of time without forgetting the vision very difficult so this is the second category the third category is what typically takes startups forward which is it's an operator who knows you give me an area i will execute and come back don't ask me to think i will get this done so entrepreneurs also having some elements of building a venture an operator typically does not think that way this is an area i'll sort it out i'll hold this complete area so once you cross zero to one if you don't have operator you just cannot build an organization most organizations suffer in one to ten more than in zero to one i don't know if you've heard that statistic globally one particular statistic statistic uh, that's quoted is i think everybody would have heard that heard that nine out of ten ventures fail it's a commonly known statistic another not so well quoted statistic is that if you try to grow after that you know the ones which you do not try to grow it is okay they will continue like that if you try to grow out of that 96 out of the next 100 will fail so it's basically 4 out of 1000 that survives something like that so it is that journey from 1 to 10 that breaks the venture you can actually cross the zero to one after that what will you do you know you can actually be tied to the venture you can be you know continuously engage the venture it's self self employment but if you try to make it into a venture a scaled up venture which is independent of you that requires phenomenally different set of skills so for which you need to know what type of a character you are are you a founder are you an entrepreneur are you a system designer are you a builder are you a maker what are you if you know that you can plug the other guy so when you should use come when and when an individual understands these things the depth to which they understand okay you are this you are good at this what about all of this i don't know okay we'll plug that in okay done but the average guy will think that no i am this i am that i am this i know all of that i am good in that also so we have no space so there's nothing for the venture studio to do so either someone who deeply understands the problem or who is intelligent enough to say that i don't know maybe he knows Uh, some some dots i can share uh, we have uh, built uh, small initiatives ventures in um, in construction in home finishing in technology in food in trading uh, so these were all people who just identified themselves as entrepreneurs now only when they get into Uh, the art of execution do they understand that there's a big difference between my level of understanding of a particular domain and my ability to act when there is nothing in the slate the completely different things i might cognitively understand everything about a space but i don't know what is the next step to be taken when the white slate is there in front of me so for a person to understand that this is the jump that i need to make 
If I don't know what is my next step, then every day I am stuck. No amount of understanding will help. So, making people understand that you don't know the next step. So, maybe something is lacking. Uh, it could be a systemic lack of clarity. It could be a skill problem. It could be an understanding problem. It could be an attitude problem. It could be n number of reasons. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to take the trouble to learn that skill. I am not interested in that domain. I thought I will manage it with somebody else. A lot of entrepreneurs think that from day one they can manage. For which they need a team. No one is going to listen to you. So, this limitations if people understand. Then it makes them one step ahead in terms of why is it that I am unable to move. If you have actually run a venture for three years, and if you have not really achieved their go achieved the goals, then they will really understand what this is. Uh, otherwise, it is very difficult to comprehend the concept and they will misconstrue it as advisory, consulting, strategy, uh, thinking. It is not that, it is none of that. It is execution. It is the art of execution wrapped up into a commercial institution. I think uh, in one way you are fully correct. Uh, in the sense that uh, anyone who misses a capability and is completely aware that I missed that capability automatically fits in. But from a commercial perspective, the stage at which you play becomes dramatically important because each venture studio would specialize in a level at which it can play. So there, is, there are venture studios which play 0 to 1. So Ystack is a venture studio which says that we understand 0 to 1 game. It's a different type of capability in 1 to 10 and it's a, I don't know, at least simple to understand, may not be easy to execute capability in 10 to 100. Okay, because it's it becomes very, very clear. It's just a matter of execution. So, these are all completely different combination of skill sets and capabilities and each venture studio would either be good in one of them, most probably would not really be organizationally structured to serve the other two stages. So, we, we are a 0 to 1 venture studio. And you are sector agnostic. We are purposefully sector agnostic, uh, which people might not like and might think that it is lack of focus and might think that it will not work. We are purposefully keeping it sector agnostic to ensure that we get dots to connect from different industries and at least we will play like this for 2 to 3 years before we decide if at all a sector focus would matter. Because the way we the way in which we built it is through breadth and going vertically deep into an industry will never enable us to do that thing. Okay, I think that helps because in my head, I somehow had this impression that why stack was focused on the technology sector. Don't ask me why. Maybe it's just the name or I do not know why. Uh, our first venture through the venture study was a technology company. We okay. built a technology company. Uh, but why stack is not a technology company at all. Instagram is a venture builder okay. and it builds venture. That I understood, that, but, but I thought it was focused, focused. on the technology sector. Oh, but no. you are clarified saying it is not. Uh, to be very specific, at the moment we have uh, one venture that we are building in a space called Patient Reported Outcome Measure. It is a startup named Mewell that we are building with an oncologist in the city. Uh, Recently, the doctor, the founder has been invited to present the product in a conference in the US. It was covered by Madhubhumi yesterday. Uh, that it's called Mewell. The second startup is in a space called Vocational Education and Construction Industry. It is about skilling talent for a unorganized informal sector, particular capability. So, a product play in that space. Uh, we are exploring place in sports tech. One of our failed ventures was in cinema. Another one is in uh, a space called uh, financial crimes. Uh, there is another one which is in deep AI capabilities in mixing of multiple LLMs for creatives in Germany. So, at the moment, we have actually made dots geographically in US, Europe and Australia and in our country, 
we have some kind of a dot available for operations in delhi gujarat mumbai bangalore and kochi so it's, it's purposefully done that way uh, it is kept sector agnostic market agnostic geography agnostic i'll try to give the an analogy of a uh, medical college and a hospital um, at least in our country uh, medical colleges are always attached to a hospital unlike engineering colleges which do not have attached industries with it i am an electronics engineer passed with distinction i still don't know how that electric bulb works okay or anything to do with electronics i am i'm very bad that's because you know, what i studied and the application of that was never connected when i studied now think of education being done in such a way for at least for those on aspiring entrepreneurs where they have an operating industry context while they are learning entrepreneurship this is one of the primary reasons why entrepreneurship is not a successful course even in world's best academic institutions because it cannot be taught in an academic environment it needs an operational environment so you can talk manage you can teach management you can talk leadership you can teach execution all of that can be taught but when you say entrepreneurship it's too abstract a space to say that it can be structurally taught the reason being it's an action oriented feedback oriented thing so while you are learning you got to connect it with something so for a moment just hear it as that is a venture studio what do you connect your academic institution with you should connect it with the venture studio so when we are planning our gtm as in our go to market over the next decade we are planning to build three different components one is the venture studio that we spoke about the venture studio that creates ventures second one as the next phase we got to launch our own fund which from the outside world looks like any other fund it's just that that fund is more or less aligned with place coming from the venture studio so it is a venture fund and the third component is we envisage building of a venture school which is a dedicated school for aspiring entrepreneurs right from the time they are ready it can be 8th standard it can be 10th standard it can be engineering it can be mba whatever it is so an institution that you walk into if you know that you're building a venture if you want to build a venture so why stacks gtm is a combination of on one side queuing up talent much before they are ready you know building a community long before they are ready exposing them to the art of venture building through that practical exposure to venture studio through internships or community or whatever model that suits them and when they are ready attaching it with capital and the operational capability of venture studio to enable them to build that so this combination of ecosystem is what why stack envisages to build where are we we are too early to come and about all of that we are building that first cog we are building that venture studio which can independently stand and once we are able to do anywhere near what i claim that we will build then probably we'll start touch upon the next other two things so from that angle any aspiring entrepreneur can touch uh, one cog of the venture studio and build along with us uh, an experienced guy can actually do need not go through a venture school can actually uh, do that but make it very structurally understandable what is this venture building it's not a complex thing it can be designed it can be built it can be learned it can be improvised it is not so abstract as it is you know tooted to be it's easily comprehensible uh the question is how does accountability work or how how is accountability designed into it i'm just curious to know how are you held accountable very simple that, that's all that he is asking as an institutional investor since you are co founder institutional co founder yeah as an institutional co founder how are you held accountable is there a point of contact specific point of contact and is is it just him and i uh, you know part of this purpose it's a whole institution I'll, i'll i'll talk about something that i'm currently going through so uh, for simplicity sake uh, sake we have decided uh, venture building 
to be seen through the lens of five frames. So to build a venture, you got to generate resources to do that. You build a team, you have to build a product, whatever it is, you know, product does not mean a technological product. You have to market it, you have to sell it. So fundamentally, these five components are there when you say build a venture. So for simplicity's sake, here it is, each of them is equal. So 20% goes towards the guy who generates resources, 20% goes to the guy who assembles a team, 20% goes to the guy who builds the product, 20% goes to the guy who tells the world that we exist, and 20% goes to the guy who actually generates value out of that. So for simple understanding, there are five components to be built. And if the person does it, give them 20%. If they don't do it, don't give them 20%. So Venture Studio will get it when they do that. Or you have a person who knows Venture Studio for years and know that anyway I know that you will do. I am only doubtful whether I will do. That is what community brings in. Knowing Venture Studio for through years, a founder gets the confidence that the Venture Studio is confident and it has the intent to deliver. So the question is not whether the Venture Studio will deliver, the question is whether I will deliver. That is what the community would actually bring in. Uh, it's just an example, not perfect. Yeah. Right. So, as somebody who approaches it, uh, I would assume I would be part of all five, like at least that would be required. Uh, and is it only parts that I need help with that I would uh, you know, approach before, or is it natural, you know, 50 50 sort of understanding of the whole, you know, zero to one aspect? The word venture has a specific connotation in the economic world, venture. Okay. It is, it connotes the size of that economic opportunity. So if it's a large enough economic opportunity, people can collaborate. If it is not, you better run it as a family business or run it as a self-employed business. So, so that the vocabulary is clear, venture denotes a large game. Colloquially, that's how it's used, though technically the word venture might not mean that. but. Colloquially, that's how it's used. When you say venture, it's venture scale. It means that it's collaborable, it's scalable. And typically, it comes in when a problem can be solved through a completely different way, which was hitherto not existing. It's typically what you call technology. Technology does not mean coding. Techno I mean, steam engine was a technology. Railways is a technology. Aeroplane is a technology. So when a new technology comes in, an entrepreneur or a founder thinks that using that I can build a venture scale company because this tech allows me to solve a problem in a way in which it has never been solved. So this is the context of a venture irrespective of you know the type of venture. A new technology coming in which at least opens up a new way in which a problem can be solved or it could be a combination of technologies or it could be a combination of factors some tech and some non-tech. Without this, it's very difficult to build a scalable venture in a fast period of time. Because otherwise, it's only organic linear growth of 10 to 15 to 20 percentage that an organization can achieve once it crosses the zero to one stage. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, assuming that this vocabulary is there and it is a venture and there is a technology component, then the context becomes how fast can you create that venture scale company? Do you want to do it over a 10 year period or do you want to attempt with some proofs that come out in the next one or two years? So for a person and a founder who understands this, the there is no choice. The fastest way in which I can do that. So the moment you understand it, you would not try to say that I will do everything. Whoever does it better than me, please let them do it so that at least the output will come. Otherwise, by the time my output will come, this output would not be valuable in the context of the industry. The co-founder which does the work creates the outcome. I am not even using the word output. It creates the outcome. So if you take an action context, you should take actions in alignment with a particular goal which is distant in nature, which you can't really see. It might look abstract to a lot of people due to, due to which you create outputs which are understandable to people and ask people to create outputs with the assumption that those outputs might lead to valuable outcomes, with the assumption that those outcomes might lead to goals. So it's this whole process that a Venture Studio does. 
It is not about creating an output that a founder asks you to. That is just a glorified vendor. It is uh, uh, very simple one. Instead of a um, individual being a shareholder in the founding stock, which is typically the common stock of a private limited company, that common stock is held when the company is formed by a, another private limited company represented by a director of that private limited company. So it's a private limited company getting formed with one of the one component of the common stock being held by another private limited company. That's all the legal structure that is required to play this game. And, and in case of the product getting moving into the market, the same arrangement continues, right? Till the time the you know, stage of exit is arrived. Uh, typically, venture scale companies are built through a combination of common stock and preference shares. So, common stock is what the founder or the founding team creates. Anything after that is typically associated with preference shares, which is which comes with a different set of preferred voting rights or preferred exit plans or something. So, the venture studio gets in as a common stock founder. It's called founding stock, and then anybody who comes in and invests after that gets preference shares. So typically from an exit context, usually companies don't exit common stock in the early part of the game because that's what controls the company. Like any other investor, Venture Studio also might invest through preference shares at a later point. That is what they will exit. The common stock exit might happen much later in the game because that's what controls the company. You know, the Companies Act compliance framework that's available in the country. One shareholder is a private limited company. We are not at a stage where we have generated that return, so we can't really claim that. Uh, but if you were to look at the investor spectrum, we've got public markets which talks about 15-20% which average CAGR over a long period of time. That is when you've covered every type of risk stripped off from the business and commercial model and then you go and list your company where only the governance and execution matters, there's no risk. So in such a model, you target a 15-20% which return for a good public market stock, if you manage to do it over a long period of time. Sometimes you get a bounty, which is actually 1x or 2x, very rare. You come one level down, you have the ability to generate returns through a format called private equity, where investors actually buy into companies, roll it up into a different asset and then sell off as an asset. That's the asset class of private equity. You come one level down, you have the asset class of venture capital, where you enter before the risks are stripped off, the risks are ele element risks risks are part of that structure, and you get in knowing that those risks are there. Due to which, typically, venture capital works in the concept of power law, where you invest into ten of them, nine will fail, one of them would actually succeed. That will create a ten x, twenty x, fifty x, and that will take care of your returns. Now, this problem is actually this power law is not working the way. It was anticipated to work in our country due to multiple structural reasons. And also because of the advancement of technology, this power law might not be the way in which Indian ventures are going to be built in the next decade because people do not really have 10 years to build value because by that time, the tech will really you know, outsmart you. So we have to bring down the time period to create a venture and the speed at which you create the venture dramatically is going to affect the outcome that you are going to create. So, yes, it is a venture scale outcome, but does not have the risks that a venture takes because there is an operational co-founder. It will create governance frameworks, it will create a design, it will create execution, capital will not be wasted, it's more capital efficient due to which the return possibilities of a venture studio are venture scale, but with less amount of risks. This is what is globally statistically proven at the moment that venture studios create better than venture capital returns while accepting a lower than venture capital risk. This is not always true. I am a venture studio founder, so my opinion would be biased. But uh, statistically, that is what it is leading to. The size of the outcome might come down, but the size of the return will not come down. You might not create a billion dollar outcome. You might create only a hundred million dollar outcome. But the probability of you creating a hundred million dollar outcome is dramatically more than what a single founder will create. So the risks are actually lowered. Risk professional. So within three to five years, 
we will demonstrate the feasibility and viability of the model is all that they can claim. Because when you mention venture fund, mm -hmm. typically the funds, the investors Seven. to the fund will come with a time Absol frame in mind. Absolutely. So when you launch a fund, you will have to give them a priority as to the time. I think typically in the Indian context, seven year AF is what is uh, popular and seven year is what is get getting uh, getting fixed as a model. Seven year is, uh, I mean, if you just do a one on two, one on one matching, seven years is more than time enough to know whether the venture studio does anything good or not. So, if the venture studio cannot make a difference in one to three years' time, once execution starts, something is wrong. Either the model is wrong, or the founder is wrong, or the venture studio is not competent in that space. There's no point in trying after one, two, three years. That means the venture has failed. Wrap it up and start the next one. Time will not be a big constraint from, from that angle. Usually it's much higher than that because it's an operational co-founder. I gave an example here. It usually ranges from 5 percentage to 70 percentage. Okay. 70 is when uh, Venture Studio announces the game, launches the game, does the 0 to 1 and then invites an entrepreneur to join. Purely Venture Studio founded games. Rest of them starts from, usually I would say 5 to 20. 5 to 20 is what? For example, Productized services would be perfectly okay, but services which are tailored to the needs of the customer depending upon the customer situation, unlikely. Productized services, qu quite okay. <laughs> 650. Uh, yeah, right. So, I, I think Aaron will be available for a few more minutes outside during the okay. networking hours. So, if you can connect, I mean, you can connect with him personally. Uh, let me thank uh, Aaron for taking him taking him his time out and you know spending this evening with us. Uh, also, I would like to thank you all for joining us today because even though the weather is not in favor, uh, we have a very good attendance and thank you so much for that. Uh, we, we have our networking zone open outside, just outside the door. Uh, we have arranged a few uh, refreshments, so please enjoy. But before that, let me invite uh, Mr. Ayn B. Srina, uh, he's the co-founder of Aventus Partners to uh, hand over a moment, uh, uh, a token of appreciation on behalf of Thai Kerala. I'm so this is a customized uh, 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 portrait done by Fabus. Fabus Strange is a member of Thai Kerala. 